Hi everyone, um, this is the Office of Child Care. Um, I'm Dawn Ramsberg and I'm going to do um, a quick um, housekeeping announcement before we jump into our content today. So first of all, just want to say welcome to everyone to our um, tribal plan um, review and approval, um, where are we now, call. And um, just as a reminder, and these are um, housekeeping um, items we go over on every call, but um, please keep your lines muted um, dur during the call and um, that you're able to send questions or comments to us through the chat box. And then um, if we have time, we will open the line for questions and comments at the end as well um, so we can open the, the line up. And we always get asked. We will circulate the slides after the call. We always have to go through a process called 508 compliance, which um, allows the slides to be viewed by people who um, don't have sight. So they use sight readers. And so um, that's why we don't send these out before the call, because you might find a mistake or something while we're on the call. And so we would want to be able to correct that so we don't go through the 508 process ahead of time but we will definitely circulate the slides afterwards. And so um, to kick us off for our call today, before we get into a lot of the nitty gritty details, we have our director, um, Shannon Christian here today, who um, is going to just um, make some opening remarks for us, and then um, we'll, go, we'll go from there. So Shannon, I'm going to turn the floor over to you. OK, thank you, Don. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today for this webinar on the fiscal year 2021 Tribal Child Care and Development Fund Plan. As you know, for the last six months, we all, tribal lead agencies and the Office of Child Care staff, have been working intensely to prepare, submit, and review the fiscal year 2022 Tribal CCDF Plan. This marks a monumental effort to incorporate the new requirements from the Child Care and Development Block Grant Act of 2014 and the subsequent final rule published in 2016. These new requirements ensure the health and safety of children from low-income working families, but they also mean a lot of work for the tribal lead agencies to build these changes into their CCDF plan. The process started with two, two pre-training webinars to prepare tribal lead agencies to write their CCDF plans followed by two- and three-day meetings in each region to train tribal lead agencies on the content needed in the preprint. Since the CCDF plans were submitted on September 6th of 2019, Office of Child Care staff have been in regular contact with tribal lead agencies as they've been reviewing all 221 tribal CCDF plans. And now we're getting ready to issue final approval for the plan. But our work won't end here. For many of the tribal lead agencies, this plan period will serve as a transition. The webinar will cover more of this, but many tribal lead agencies have not yet been able to implement all of the CCDF requirements into their 2022 CCDF plan. In some cases, this is because the tribal lead agencies still have actions to take. In other cases, tribal lead agencies have partnerships with states to meet certain requirements, and it's the states that need to take action. Over the next two and a half years, Office of Child Care is committed to working with the tribal lead agencies to ensure that all the tribal CCDF plans in the next plan cycle are in compliance with the requirements. But when I look back over the accomplishments of the last year, I have no doubt that we'll be able to meet this goal. We are so deeply grateful for your support in strengthening the program to better meet the child care needs of children and families and enjoy working with you and look forward to the coming year. Thank you. Thanks, Shannon. So um, as Shannon said, there's been a lot of work going on and we thought it was really important today to just check in with everyone, let you know kind of not, not really as much where we've been, but kind of where we're going. And so um, just Again, another key point as we kick this off, um, we want to just be sure to um, our colleagues who may have a consolidated um, 
plan under the 102477 that we are welcome we welcome that you are all on the call here today and we think that some of the content um, will be relevant um, to you even though we're focusing on the tribal CCDF plan so not the consolidated 477 plan but we um, welcome um, all of you who've been able to join us who have a 477 plan and um, look forward to continuing our work with you as well. So um, there will be three of us talking today. Um, like I said, we want to not only talk about where we're been, where we've been, but where we're going. So in, in addition to myself, Don Ramsberg, the Division Director of Program Operations, you will also hear um, today from our um, Division Director for Training and Technical Assistance as well as um, Ginny Giff, and then also from Stephanie Murray, who's our child care program specialist, who's the lead on background checks. And so as we go through the agenda, you will be hearing from one of the three of us. So let's talk a little bit about the agenda. So we want to talk, um, like I said, just the timeline of the plan review and approval process and kind of where we are and what you should expect which is approval letters um, that should be coming out in um, the next month or so. We want to talk about technical assistance today. As Shannon mentioned, our goal is to um, help you over the next um, two and a half years um, with technical assistance and making sure that all the CCDF requirements are met, met. We'll talk about background checks and then the timeline for coming into compliance. So as I said, over the course of um, the call today, we'll go through all of that. Um, one of the things on this slide we wanted to kind of give everyone a picture of because um, this is this is a picture that changes every time plans come in. Um, but there's a few things of note. So Shannon mentioned in her remarks we had 221 tribal lead agencies apply for CCDF um, this year. So um, so that wasn't increase because along with those 221 tribal lead agencies, we now have um, four C4 um, tribes who consolidate under 102477. And so, there, so this couple things of note is now for the first time Region 3, which is out of our Philadelphia regional office, they um, have their first tribal lead agency. So now all 10 ACF regional offices have at least one tribal lead agency, one tribal CCDF grantee. So that's a first for the Office of Child Care to have um, every region have at least one tribal CCDF lead agency. And then the other thing of note, and these are indicated by the blue dots, um, is the 477 tribes. And we now have eight of our 10 regional offices that have at least one um, tribe, tribal lead agency consolidating under four, the 477 program. So the scope of the program and the reach of CCDF continues to grow. So um, for this um, funding cycle, there will be 265 tribal lead agencies when you combine the 221 um, tribal CCDF lead agencies along with the 477 um, program. So, um, that is good news for us. We have more tribes that we're working with and we look forward to working with all of you. So for those um, who may be wondering um, what is the tribal plan that we're talking about, because we know that there's always um, people who are coming and going, just as a reminder, the, the tribal plan, your CCDF plan, your, the, which we call the preprint, which means the preprinted form, it's your application for CCTF funds. And so, you know, you may submit applications for programs like Head Start or um, LIHEAP, you know, for CCDF, the application is our plan. And it's um, not a competitive application, but it's a place where you, every three years, you have to tell us how, um, how you're providing CCDF services and child care services um, to eligible families. There are um, specific assurances and certifications that are required to be in the plan that we need to have back from you. And it provides information about how you're administering the program. So we like to say not only is the plan your application for funds, but it's you telling us your CCDF story. How is it that you are um, creating your CCDF program? 
who you're serving and how you're operating. So it's a chance for you to tell us a story. So while it is a document that we are measuring compliance with the rules in, it really is a representation of your program and what you're doing in your tribal community. Um, again, as we've mentioned over the last year or so that we've been talking, this um, FY 2020-2022 um, CCDF tribal plan was the first that submitted that aligned both with the Child Care and Development Block Grant Act that was passed in 2014 and then the CCDF final rule that was issued in 2016. And so pr um, prior to those, there were different requirements in place, so this was the first plan that aligned with the new um, requirements. At the same time, we were putting this plan out. Um, there were historic increases in the overall CCDF funding for tribal lead agencies in the last two fiscal years in terms of the appropriations that um, we received from Congress. And so um, through the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2018, there was an um, overall increase in CCDF discretionary funds from 137 million in FY17 to 359 million in FY18. And then um, that increase was um, slightly increased in 2019 to 360 million. So um, within, those, within those funding amounts, there's a 2.75% set aside from the discretionary funds and a 2% set aside from the mandatory funds. And so um, in addition to that formula basis in terms of the funding, there was also an additional allocation provided for the tribes of $157 million. So needless to say, Congress recognized not only with these new require, like with the new requirements that they put in place by reauthorizing the CCDDG Act, but there was money that was appropriated to support the implementation to meet those requirements. And so we just wanted to um, remind everyone about the obligation and liquidation periods that go along with that funding amount. And um, again, keeping in mind how that lays across this plan period. And so um, those increased funds, those overall increased funds um, were uh, awarded um, FY 2018, 2019. And so you can see the obligation and liquidation periods that um, line up with those. And so um, as you're carrying forward your plan, um, based including what you've told us now, but anything that you do going forward, there there's dollars that go along with it that you'll be able to use to, to support your program administration. So um, that was really helpful to receive that increase through the congressional appropriation. So um, we put this picture together because, again, kind of what I just talked through in bullet points, this is another way of kind of, of showing the different pieces. But in 2014, um, the CCDBG Act was reauthorized, but in 2016 there was a final rule. Um, this past summer, um, you all submitted child count declarations to us. Those come in every three years now. Those um, child count declarations are the numbers on which the individual tribal lead agency funding amounts are based on. And so, again, you know, because it's a formula, um, we have to have all tribes child counts, and then we run it against the appropriated amount to determine how much um, each tribe will receive through an allocation. So it, um, that was a key part of um, the information provided this year along with the new plan is your um, child count declaration. So that's how the funding amounts were determined. And then in September, um, your plans were submitted and we sent everyone a provisional approval email that, um, that basically said because we received your plan and we had your child count, we were able to move forward with um, our Office of Grants Management to issue um, the FY2020 funding when that became available. Um, so that's why you received a provisional email approval because um, in order for us to award the funds, there has to be an approved plan. So 
you received a provisional um, approval based off the child count and the submission of your plan. And then since October, or once we received it and going forward into October and then into November, um, we have been working to review the plans that you've submitted and looking at um, what you've submitted in relation to the CCDF requirements. And so that review has been ongoing um, October, November, and actually continuing into December. So this is a place where it's important um, that may not line up with previous information that you have. So we had hoped um, to be able to generate your final approval letters um, within the next week. But because um, in some regions acro across the country, and it's actually not some regions, it, across the country, because we do not have all the plans reviewed and, in, and to a place to be able to approve, that is going to take us a few more weeks. And so, um, so those letters will, conti will continue to wrap up the review process um, into, in December and then move forward to start generating those letters after the new year. Um, and then we expect to issue those in January. So we wanted to go ahead and hold the call that we had been planning to have to kind of walk you through the letters today, even though you don't have them, just to, because we knew that information had been provided um, regarding getting those letters, and so we didn't want you all to wonder where they were. So we wanted to just give you an update, um, you know, because, because it's new requirements for us too, the review process, you know, is a little more detail-oriented than maybe it's been in the past because um, it's, it, we're all looking at new information and in new ways, and we also talked about how there's some additional new tribes. So the volume of the work increased as well as um, the need for just making sure we're understanding. So um, that's not to be an excuse for why you don't have letters, but it's just to try and help understand that we're still working on that and we will get those final approval letters out um, after the new year. And even though you don't have those final approval letters, um, I just want to point out, as I said earlier, you have your FY2020 funding. We were able to issue that based on your submission of the plan and your child count. And so no one should worry because they don't have a final approval letter on their plan that their funding is in jeopardy, that you, you have those dollars and they're, um, they're available for you to use. So again, we've walked through this a few times over the last year or so, but just to remind everyone, um, under the new rule, um, three separate allocation sizes were created, um, and those were based on the FY2016 um, um, CCDF allocation tables. And so that carries forward, but now it's your fun, your um, it's based off your new child counts that were submitted. And so, um, so, in, so again, just as a reminder, small allocation tribes are those who receive under 250,000. Um, small allocation tribes are exempt from the majority of CCDF requirements. So um, they must still meet quality and health and safety requirements, but most other requirements um, the tribes are exempt from of the small allocation tribes are exempt from. And so um, the plan that you submitted was abbreviated for small allocation tribes, meaning that you only had to answer three sections of the plan instead of the full, um, the full plan that included more sections. Um, median allocation tribes are 250,000 to 1 million. Um, they, they are exempt from operating in a certificate program and then some of the same exemptions as the large allocation tribes, which are those over a million, um, but otherwise they're subject to the majority of the CCTF requirements. So again, that's just a refresher um, on kind of the, the, different, um, the different allocations and how that relates to the plan. And so this is just another visual way of looking at that. So essentially, the abbreviated plan for the small allocation tribes 
are the four sections that have the red um, box with the S in it, whereas the medium and large allocation tribes had to answer all seven sections of the plan. So just to expand on the final approval letters that I referenced earlier, so each tribe will be notified of your plan approval status through a letter um, that will come from the Office of Child Care and be signed by our director, Shannon Christian. There will be two kind of approval statuses um, possible with the plan, so um, or with the letter. So for some provisions, um, you may be in an approved status, meaning what you submitted um, has been approved and there's no additional expectation. Um, it, in some cases, though, there will be some provisions where we will call it approved with conditions. And what that will mean is that there is some additional corrective action that the tribe, um, it, the tribe will need to take um, because there's something that the tribe still needs to do to come into compliance, so there's additional action needed by the tribe or lead agency, or that it's um, pending additional corrective action by the state, meaning that the tribe is not able to put something in place yet, the tribal lead agency is not able to put something in place yet because you're waiting on the state to put something in place. And it was really important to us that if the state was still needing, still working on meeting CCDF requirements, it was really important for us to not expect the tribal lead agencies to, to put something else in place when we know that um, in many cases that, um, that there's partnership going on between the state and the tribe. So for example, the tribe relies on the state licensing um, rules and regulations we didn't want to expect the tribe to make make your own um, licensing rules and regulations because the state hadn't put something in place. Um, we wanted to be able to say, while this is not approved, we recognize there's additional action that the state needs to take. And, um, and so when the state takes that action, we would expect you to take that action. But in the meantime, um, we don't expect you to do something else um, that seem like an extra burden that none of us wanted to put um, put out there on anyone. So that's why this, this word approved with conditions pending additional corrective action, it's a new kind of terminology for us as well. But we wanted to just kind of talk you through what we were thinking and why we did that. Um, if your letter does, um, does fall into that status approved with conditions, pending additional corrective action, um, your letter will list those provisions that require the corrective action, and w especially the ones um, where you're waiting on the states, we want to make sure that that's clear, kind of so you understand kind of where you're at and what our expectations are going forward. So we will be as explicit as possible, but it, it still is something um, that you have questions about, once you receive it, we're happy to help kind of navigate that as well. But like I said, um, the old days, maybe we'll get back to them sometime in the near future. We've been going through this five-year transition as a new law and new rules have come into place. But the old days of just getting an approval letter um, are not where we are right now. So we, um, we've kind of carved out this terminology of um, approved with conditions and um, hopefully this is just for this transition period and going forward, we won't need to use something like this in the future. Um, in terms of ongoing monitoring of the monitoring and oversight of your CCDF um, program once, um, there's a couple things I think of note and, and you'll see some of this language in the letter as well is, um, just because we've completed plan review doesn't mean that our ongoing monitoring and oversight of the, your tribal um, lead agency ends. And so, you know, while the plan includes questions that encompass all elements of the regulations as we're required to put out, it does not ask about all aspects of all of the federal requirements. 
So it's not an exhaustive, um, it's not an exhaustive set of questions that cover every single detail of the program. And so since it's not exhaustive, it, you know, I want to be clear that it's possible that there might be other issues that come up as part of our ongoing oversight activities, you know, with you all. Um, and so I just don't want anyone to be caught by surprise. Well, I have an approved plan. What do you mean I, I'm not compliant with this other thing? It may be the other thing is something that wasn't asked about in the plan. And so, you know, the plan is not our only um, tool for oversight and monitoring of the administration of the CCDF program. And then the other thing that you'll see in the letters that will come out after the new year um, is language just talking about plan amendments. So again, once your plan goes into an approved status, whether that's approved as a whole or approved with conditions, then um, at any time you're able to submit a plan amendment and um, those are required when there's substantial changes to your CCDF program. So you, um, you have new health and safety training that you require all providers to do. That might be a substantial change and so you'd want to do a plan amendment for that. Or if you're a medium or large tribe, you have new eligibility um, requirements, you'd want to do a plan amendment for that to inform us. And so there is a separate in program instruction that talks about plan amendments more about kind of when to submit those and, and you know, when it's more applicable to submit. We also will um, will be providing some training um, either through a national webinar or through our regional offices in terms of kind of the technical process of how to submit those amendments. But the first step for us is to get your plans approved and then we can move um, forward with talking about plan amendments. So I think with that, um, I know folks have been checking the chat box and so I don't know if there's anything that I need to address that have come up so far or should we keep going? Um, well, we've had a, a few requests for more information about obligating funds. Mm -hmm. So um, we have been in communication with the Tribal Center during this webinar. They are supporting us in this webinar, and so they will be reaching out to those folks to talk to them about the information that they need. Um, there are some questions about the timeline for obligating and liquidating um, funds, which I think we addressed in the chat box, and then we will be sending out these slides after the presentation, which has that little table for you all. Great. So then I think we we'll, I'll turn it over to Ginny to talk about, um, now that I've, I feel like I've kind of, it's not bad, bad news, but now that I've kind of had to be the um, person to say, your plan may not be fully approved, we want to also be able to say, but we're here to help. And so I'm going to turn it over to our uh, Director of Technical Assistance, Ginny Gipp, and she'll talk a little bit more about that. Hi everyone, this is Jenny, and um, it's really nice to see some people who have been in CCDF for, um, how about this, very experienced CCDF administrators on the line. So that's kind of a shout out to Jackie Haight from Port Gamble Slalom, who I see in the chat box. Um, I used to go by Jenny Gorman, maybe you'll remember me that way, Jackie. Um, so I wanted to just touch um, a little bit about the TA supports that we have, and in this slide here, we are letting you know that um, similar to what we've done with the states in this last year when their plans were reviewed and a review for compliance, that we will be looking very carefully at the types of TA that are really needed this year and focusing on those to help tribes come into compliance with the rule, or with the law and the final rule. Um, and one of the key parts of that is, of course, the background check piece. And right after I speak, you'll hear from Stephanie Murray, our colleague here, about background checks. Um, and all of our OCC uh, TAs, it says here, is available for all tribes. On the next slide, we have a nice chart that Rachel put together that talks about the key, the kind of the broker of our TA system, and that's our National Center on Tribal Early Childhood Development, and that's the purple circle. And they, um, they, de they develop deliver, and deliver universal TA with like webinars and targeted, tailored, and more intensive technical assistance like on-site um, on 
they also broker the technical assistance within our larger early, ch early childhood training and technical assistance system. On this slide, we have the two other, what we see in kind of the, in the next, as we move forward um, with designing TA that's going to help tribes come into, those tribes that need to come into compliance with the law and the rule, we wanted to feature our National Center on Child Care Data and Reporting, which you'll see in the blue circle. And that center, some of you have worked with um, their tribal TA staff for years, people like Rosa. Um, so what they do, for those of you who are newer, is they're, they're the TA center that helps you with your annual data report. It's called the ACF 700, and that's where you report on the number of children served and the type of child care settings that they were served and by certain age ranges. The orange circle is our National Center on Subsidy Innovation and Accountability. And they have the lead for, they obviously work on all the pieces of subsidy having to do with the payment rates and setting up a subsidy system. And, um, but the key piece for us that we're going to talk about today, as right when I'm done, is the background checks piece. We were pleased to add another staff person into that technical assistance center, the orange circle. Last year, we added a tribal TA specialist to really focus on tribal background checks and provide support on that. And we wanted to let you know, and I, our director, Shannon, had to leave for another meeting, but we talked quickly out in the hallway as she was going because for those, some of you may remember, Shannon was our director back here in the Bush administration, and she's thrilled to be back, loved working with tribes. And she wanted to make sure that I mentioned to you what we all know here, and that is that we want to we want to try to meet tribes where they are with TA. We recognize that we have a third turnover of tribal lead agency administrators every year. And um, when Shannon's been to a few meetings this year, including a Region 9 and 10 meeting, she heard from some people that they were interested in kind of a way in setting up mentoring or peer learning um, a system. And we're interested in trying to figure out how to do that. We haven't been able to figure it out yet because there are so many needs out there about particularly this next year with where technical systems will be um, devoted. But we want to be able to, we're, we want you to know we're hearing what it is you're asking for. Um, so we are looking for TA pro approaches beyond the Universal Witches webinar. And more recently, we've added things like peer learning communities, which we are pleased with, and office hours that are subject specific. And we'll continue to do more of that. But we can't do what we don't know we should be doing. So you need to reach out to us directly or, or certainly through your regional office staff. And that's I'm closing out on this um, red on the red circle in the middle. And that's a reminder to all of you that your regional office staff and the Office of Child Care, they're the ones who are available to provide technical assistance directly to you and also connect you with our OCCPA resources. So please let them know what needs you have and what we could be helping doing maybe a little bit differently, and we'll try to do that as much as we can. And with that, I think it's time for Stephanie. Is that right? Okay. Hello, everyone. This is Stephanie Murray. Um, you may remember me from a few months ago. Um, I gave an additional, another webinar on alternative approaches to meeting the background check requirements, and that was back in the summer in August. And um, I know that since then you have all worked very diligently through the CCDF plan process and understanding the background checks, understanding all the components that go into the background checks has been a challenge. It's very complex and also understanding how those checks apply to your programs um, has been another um, challenge and it all really comes down to how your, your tribe is structured, how your child care programs in your tribe is structured. And the way that we've been able to look at it is by breaking it into these two buckets. Um, are your child care programs licensed by the state? Do you have state partnership? Or are you operating um, tribal programs um, without state licensing? And so that's kind of how we've been able to gauge where tribes are in meeting the requirements. And depending on where you fall in that bucket um, kind of determines how we look at the background check requirements. So here um, I wanted to provide a clearer overview of the background checks 
um, as they would apply to your tribe, depending on what kind of partnerships you have in place, what kind of structure you have in place. So tribes, tribal programs that are not state licensed, basically from the alternative approaches program instruction that we issued back in August, and that was PI 2019-05. Um, this is kind of how we broke it out. If you're a tribal program, you have to be making some attempt to determine the criminal history, the sex offender history, and the child abuse and neglect history of the staff member. And that can be done in many ways. Um, you, can, you could be utilizing your tribal court systems. You could be utilizing the tribal access program to do fingerprinting, tap. You could be using a private company. You could be using an FBI channeler. There are many ways to meet that requirement if your um, program is being operated by the tribe itself. But if you are partnering with the state, then all of the requirements for the background checks become all the basic requirements, the basic CCDF requirements. And that's broken out into three categories, the in-state checks, the national checks, and the interstate checks, as you can see there. And I'm hoping that this visual can help everyone better understand um, how we took the approach to looking at the CCDF plan. So as Don explained earlier, when you receive your approval letter, your conditional approval letter, we will have broken out the background check requirements based on how the child care programs in your tribe are structured. So again, if the tribal program is state licensed, um, you'll see that the letter, your plan will be approved with conditions pending corrective action by the state. So if the state has any non-compliant provisions, if they're on corrective action for any of the background check provisions, um, we will not hold you to those non-compliant provisions. Your compliance with those background check requirements will be contingent on the state coming into compliance with those requirements. And so in the meantime, we would not require you to develop any other alternative approaches or methods to meet those non-compliant provisions. We would just, you would just be waiting for the state to take action on that provision. And so for tribal programs on the left there in the green, um, the approval letter, the CCDF plan would be approved with conditions pending corrective action by the tribal lead agency. And so in the meantime, um, you'll be receiving technical assistance over the next two years to come into compliance with those provisions. And again, as Don um, explained earlier, if there is, um, a lot of tribes have a mix of programs. They have some programs are state licensed, some aren't. And if you have a mix of both state licensed and non-state licensed, non-licensed tribal programs, then we will make sure that that's clear in the letter. We'll make it clear and we'll indicate who is responsible for taking that corrective action, the tribe or the state. And we'll make sure that we um, outline that for you. So. Um, as Ginny mentioned, we do have a dedicated TA specialist um, in the National Center on Subsidy Innovation and Accountability. Um, her name is Tammy Charles. You may have worked with her. And she's the subject matter expert on criminal background checks. And we're happy to have her. She's had decades of experience in CCDF administration. She's worked in with the Wyandotte nation in Oklahoma. So she comes with a lot of experience and I'm, I'm happy to be working with her as I continue to learn more about tribes. And um, I also just wanted to mention that uh, we know how complex this is. Um, I had the opportunity, the opportunity to sit in on a meeting with the Tribal Advisory Committee a few weeks ago and there were um, quite a few tribal CCDF directors there and other leadership. And I got the chance to hear from Francis Pigeon Big Crow representing the Great Plains, the 
the Sioux Tribe of South Dakota, and we were able to hear a lot directly from tribes um, about some of the challenges around background checks. And we have, um, so we've heard, we've heard what's been going on. And through the CCDF plan review process, we really have a good idea of what kind of technical assistance is needed. And so we're looking forward to working with all of you. And thank you. So this is Dawn again, and so again, just to kind of um, to put what we all have been talking about into a picture in terms of a timeline going forward. And so, um, so as of October 1st, um, the new CCDF requirements um, went into effect, and so um, you all should expect to receive receive an approval letter, and it may say approved with conditions in January um, of 2020. And then over the course of 20, um, 2020 and 2021 um, and going into 2022, our efforts will be around um, providing technical assistance for our um, tribes to come into full compliance with the CCDF requirements. And in those places where it's um, pending corrective action on the part of the state, we will be working with both you all and the states um, together, so you, we won't leave you in the dark on when that happens. And so, um, so we will be spending our efforts providing to technical assistance, to come into compliance before too long, July 2022, um, the next plan submission will come into play. And so, um, so everyone will need to be in final compliance with these new rules um, as part of that 2023-2025 um, 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 CCDF plan submission. Um, and then when that goes into effect, the expectation would be full compliance. At that point, if there are non-compliances, then um, CCDF does have um, provisions around um, what happens in the case of noncompliances, which could include possible penalties. Um, we don't want to have to go to that point. And so rest assured, our efforts will be in providing the technical assistance and working with you all and in, where needed, working with the states so that um, we don't have to reach that point. point. So, you know, we've got, we have some time in front of us. We know there are challenges, but we are here to work with you and get us all to this place so that when the next plan um, cycle comes, um, plan submission is July 2022, um, we're, we move past this compliance conversation and we're talking about innovations and best practices and all of the wonderful things that you all um, will be doing. So again, just to, to reiterate the next step, um, you should be expecting to receive these approval letters um, in the new year. And um, if you have questions, reach out to your regional offices. I, I know they're also starting to think about their um, TA planning. So if they haven't reached out already, you know, but you have things on your mind that you want to let us know, as Ginny said, we don't know everything to put in place unless we hear from you. And so, um, so those are kind of the next steps. And now we can um, we can um, see if there are any questions. And as I mentioned in the housekeeping at the beginning. We always start with our lines muted just because we don't want to hear dogs barking in the background or doorbells ringing or anything like that. But now, we, um, if you want to ask a question, you can do so via the chat box. You can also do, um, push star six to unmute and ask questions. And we would love to hear from, hear from you. So um, if you have questions, we're both watching the chat box. And you can press star six to unmute and ask a question. And this is Rachel. While we're waiting for folks to type in their question or unmute, I just wanted to say that we have been taking notes of folks who have said in the chat box that they have a, a question that would be more relevant to take offline. So we've made notes of everybody. And the Tribal Center will be following up with you after the, this webinar.
see some people are typing. We don't hear um, we don't hear anyone on the phone. So um, that we got a question about the copy of the slides for the webinar. So again, as we said at the beginning, um, you'll get slides within the next couple of days. Um, before we can send those out, we have to go through a process called 508 compliance that um, helps for people who are visually impaired. And so um, we do that after the call so that we don't have to correct any mistakes or things that might be in there. So we will get those out. And we will be sharing a copy of the recording of the webinar, which will come out a little later. So Doug asked when we would do another one of these. Um, you know, we're open to providing updates whenever, you know, whenever, um, whenever there's updates to provide. So I think, you know, I think the next thing that would happen once you get the letters is there will probably be a lot of conversations between you all and your regional offices, but we're always happy, you know, um, in central office to hold national calls when there are updates that we want to make sure everyone has. So we're not expecting, we don't have anything planned, um, but I think that you should expect at a minimum to be hearing from your regional office colleagues. I'm looking for us, uh, like, we, um, we see little um, italicies when people are typing. So we sit here patiently waiting for the, the um, question to come through. So um, again, if anyone wants to unmute and ask a question, we're open to that too, but we're also watching. There were a couple typers a minute ago. So we got a question about um, a webinar on income eligibility scales and, and family contributions, the co-pays. So again, we have our TA partners on the call, and I know that they will take note of that, and we can look for ways to not only do webinars, but if we need to do some individual or regional follow-up, I think we're open to that as well. So thanks, Lisa, for that um, suggestion. I'm going to give it a minute. We're not seeing anyone typing, and we haven't heard anyone on mute. Um, so I think then I'm, I'm like, I keep waiting to see a typer, but I'm not. So um, we also at the Office of Child Care don't mind giving people back a little bit of your time. And oh, we just. So again, we've got a, a, a question or a suggestion from Denise about um, what types of tasks or activities qualify in the different areas to so direct, I'm going to say direct services, health and safety. So again, I think that we are in a position that we can provide some different assistance and resources on, on that suggestion, Denise. And again, it may happen through your regional office or through some peer learning like Ginny suggested or um, other ways. So again, these suggestions are really helpful for us. Um, and we will move forward with planning to address them. So I'm not seeing anyone else typing, so I'm going to, um, I might say just a quick remark and wrap up while I keep one eye on the screen. But I think um, I, we're happy that so many of you were able to join us today. and. Um, and as I said, stay tuned. Once you get the letters, I'm sure you all may have more questions. Please um, go through your regional offices. We'll, we'll be happy to help address any questions you have once you get the letters. And then also expect to hear from, um, hear from us regarding technical assistance. But I think that um, you know, we're, we're optimistic about where things are and look forward to working with all of you over the next few years and move us to, um, like I said, move us past this compliance phase, this transition phase, and we really want to um, help move towards um, supporting best practices and innovations going forward. So it, we, we got a couple more suggestions on topics which are helpful, but I think I'm not seeing any more questions. 
So with that, I think we're going to wrap up today and say thank you to all of you and enjoy the rest of your day wherever you may be. So thank you.